Homeostasis is the process of maintaining a constant internal environment. And it does that by detecting stimuli both within the organism and outside of the organism and making responses to that stimuli. So it's a stimulus response mechanism. So let's have a look at an organism. Firstly, we're going to talk about a simple single celled organism called a paramecium. The paramecium has hairs all the way around the outside of the cell membrane. Now these hairs are very, very important because when they move or beat all together, they allow the paramecium to move within the water environment in which it lives. So it lives in water and it's a single cell. Because it's a, only a single celled organism, it's very, very simple. It does have organelles, but it's only the one cell, so there's no specialization. The only thing that separates it from the external environment is this narrow, this thin cell membrane. So what can it do in terms of responses then? It's able to detect stimuli, but how does it respond? Well, if a stimulus is positive, for example, so it's beneficial to the paramecium, for example, food or a mate, the paramecium is going to respond by moving towards that stimulus. It swims towards the stimulus by moving its cilia. So I might just note that this is called cilia. It's the little hairs when they and when they beat, the cilia is able to move towards a positive stimulus. But what happens if we've got a negative stimulus, something like a predator or a threat? So a negative stimulus like a threat. What's the cilia going to do? The, the paramecium going to do? It's going to be re respond again by moving, but this time it's going to move away from the negative threat. So, quite simply, the paramecium is a very simple organism. It's very simple because it's only a single cell, so there's no specialization. As such, the only way that it can respond to stimuli is by moving either towards the stimuli or away from the stimuli. Now let's have a look at a more complex organism. Again, an organism that lives in water. It's time, we've got a fish. So, it's a multi-cell organism and it lives in, in water as well. So when we've got a multicellular organism, we see specialization. What that means is that they're specialized cells that have specialized functions. Specialized tissue. So we have cells that form tissue and the tissue forms organs, specialized organs with specialized functions, specialized ways of being able to respond to stimuli. So the way that a multicellular organism is able to uh, maintain a constant environment is because of specialization, but also because of communication. There's mechanisms within an organism, a multicellular organism, for it to be able to communicate between the different cells and they, so they, the different cells and the different tissues and organs all work together to be able to maintain a constant internal environment. If you think for an example, uh, if somebody goes for a run, they're using more oxygen and producing more carbon dioxide. Uh, so that goes into the blood and it's detected in the blood uh, up here near the brain and it sends a message to the lungs to say, breathe deeper, breathe faster sends a message to the heart to say pump faster and pump harder. So we've got specialised cells and specialised tissue, specialised organs that have specialised functions. And we have sensors that uh, monitor the environment and communicate uh, instructions to those specialised parts of the body to be able to respond. I want you to think now about an analogy how this it could be similar to a submarine. 
how could specialization and communication occur in a submarine to be able to maintain a constant internal environment regardless of the depth that the submarine is, whether it's on the surface or deep down under the water, the environmental conditions are different. How does the submarine monitor and maintain a constant internal environment?